but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, for we are the hearers and by faith the doers on tonight. Let's just, uh, let me read it again. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. And since there's nobody here but who? But us tonight, we, that means we can read as many times as we want. I'd just like to read it one more time, but this time I'd like to ask you just to raise your voices and let's read it together. And what does it say again, dear saints? Call to remembrance the former days which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. I'm sort of stuck in this uh, space uh, today, and I just want uh, to uh, uh, enunciate these words one more time, uh, going back to go forward. I just want uh, you to think about those words uh, this evening, and I'm hopeful that those words will find a place of resonance in your heart and, and in your spirit. Um, whatever reason this morning um, these words uh, just started bubbling in my in my heart and in my mind about the connection between now and yesteryear and even as I came here this evening I was minded perhaps to go in another direction but I thought that with this being anniversary that perhaps these words uh, that thought would be fitting for an occasion such as this Anniversaries, as you know, are milestones. They're, they're markers by which we remember and which we celebrate. We celebrate uh, advancement. We celebrate progress. We celebrate the moving of God in our lives and, and uh, his advancing of us in, in the things of the kingdom. When we come to occasions such as this, we celebrate today we look forward to the future but we also recognize that even in celebrating today and looking forward to the future there could be no today nor could they be a, there be a future and yes there was a, unless there was a yesterday it's always important that we keep in view yesterday no we don't live in yesterday but we remember yesterday Bible talks about how important it is to, to remember that season and that time of small things. Amen. Memory keeps you humble. Memory keeps you, you know, in perspective. It gives you balance. The uh, prophet Jeremiah, when he spoke uh, in the book of, of Lamentations, and Jeremiah, as you know, was the, the weeping prophet, and he talked about uh, his memory banks said when he goes back that he remembers uh, other days and he described them metaphorically spoke about the wormwood and the gall and those are, are, are remembrances of things that were bitter that were taciturn that were difficult uh, he says I, I, I keep these things in remembrance in me amen and he said as a result of that remembrance he said then I am humbled Amen. And when I'm humbled, I, I, I understand that, that it was only God that got me through those bitter seasons. God that got me through those difficult times. And he, he, he said, I, I recall all of this to my mind. And then he says, therefore have I hope. It's of the Lord's mercy. Y'all remember him saying that? We're not what? Consumed his compassion. They fail not. But guess what? They are new every morning and then with exclamatory expression he says great is thy faithfulness you know I believe when you come to anniversary the main thing that ought to be celebrated is the faithfulness of God how many excited about God's faithfulness amen whenever whenever I think about his faithfulness I'm, I'm minded I'm minded of the fact that that his faithfulness goes beyond our faithfulness Faithfulness of the Lord is of a, of a different construct 
than your and my faithfulness. We, we do the best we can. Huh? Sometimes we measure up. Sometimes we don't measure up. Sometimes we get the job done. Sometimes we don't get the job done. But, 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 but God never fails. He's consistent with his faithfulness. He's always on the job, isn't he? He's a diligent God. I, 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 I hear the psalmist, you know, speak about his qualifications that make him so faithful. And he says, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Isn't it good to know that you got a God that's looking out for you all the time? Amen. Day and night. Old saints used to sing a song when, when I was coming up. You don't hear too much anymore, but, but they used to sing a song and say, he never has left me alone. Y'all remember that song? I hear those old mothers. They weren't the, 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 the greatest singers. They were saying about as bad as me. But, but you could feel the passion spring up from their heart. They, they would admire God. You know, I, I, I love the days when the saints, when they praised God, looked like they would look out yonder. Amen. Y'all remember when they would lift their eyes up? Amen. Looking, they, they would sing, but they weren't looking at the saints. I'm, 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 I'm so excited. Amen. When to know that genuine praise is not performance. Genuine praise is just that. It's a real praise. See, see, when you when you're really caught up in a praise, you don't care who's there. Amen. Because whoever's there is not the one that blessed me. Whoever's there, not, they're not the one that made a way. They're not the one that's been faithful. Amen. When you really praise God, let me just drop this off for free. Uh, you don't care who's with you and who ain't with you. I'm celebrating that God who never left me alone. So they would sing that song. I want the sound people to put me back where I was when I first got up. Put me back, turn it down. And I'll eat the mic in a minute. Just turn it down. Amen. But, but I remember uh, when they were saying that song, he never left me alone. They would just look up in the sky and grab the back of the bench. They say, by day and by night. Amen. He's with me always. He never has left me alone. God is amazing, isn't he? He's amazing. And, 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 and we must always live in wonder of his amazing way. We must always live in wonder of the, of the greatness of God and the grandeur of God and the majesty of God. And, and so I think it's appropriate. I'm so glad that God put it in the pastor's spirit to have this 16th anniversary celebration. I'm, I'm glad that, that there's still men and women of God in ministry who understand that it is important that the body of Christ be reminded to set aside time, amen, to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. That's why we're here. That's the psalmist said, I had fainted unless I believed to see. Didn't he say it? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I wonder who like me woke up this morning looking for his goodness. Can I get a witness? I woke up this morning with Jesus on my mind. I woke up this morning. I, I, I look for things to praise God about. I don't know why you came to church tonight, but I came to church looking for an excuse to give him another prayer. Be here on Sunday night, may as well praise him. Amen. What time is it? Is eight? Well, eight, eight twenty-eight. Amen. This, this, this is as good a time as any to give God a praise. We're not, we're not, we're not here for performance. We're not here for showmanship. Am I right, somebody? We got people here from all over the country. People from Phoenix. I didn't know my son. Amen. Had all these folk from. Phoenix here tonight. Isn't that amazing? Got on a plane, flew across country, thousands of miles, truth be told, thousands of dollars spent. Amen. Just to praise the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Look at here, the pastor. Here's a pastor, and I'm 
I'm playing with from a foreign country. <laughs> Canada's another country, y'all. Amen. Drove across the border. Amen. See, I got to leave Ottawa. Get all the way down to Buffalo. Just to praise the Lord. Some of my members snuck out of my church this morning. Amen. And the weather isn't even that good. Slippery highways. Y'all ain't said nothing. Snow and ice. Amen. Just to praise the Lord. I wish I had a praising church right now. I, 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 I haven't had you bother your neighbor, but, but everybody that's here for the right reason, tell your neighbor, I, 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 I don't know why you're here. Tell him, but I come to give God praise tonight. Amen. Since we're celebrating the church anniversary, we may as well celebrate our own anniversary. And I know somebody say, what do you mean? How am I going to celebrate uh, my anniversary? It's not my birthday. Uh, it's not my, my wedding anniversary. How am I going to celebrate my anniversary? It's not you know, uh, a special day on the calendar for me. I thought you'd never ask. I thought you knew that every day is a day of thanksgiving. This is the day. I wish I was in the right church. This is the day that the Lord had me. And I, I don't know what you're going to do. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Tomorrow's not promised. But here I am today. And since he woke me up this morning, started me on my way, I may as well give God a praise. Make a joyful noise, y'all. Hey, hallelujah. Somehow we got to, we, you know, we got to get this thing together and get everything in perspective. I'm not going to be long. Get, get our arms uh, uh, wrapped around the fact that, that, that we have been called out to be celebrants. Amen. Cele celebration is our first calling. People look at us and they think we're, we're, we're ignorant. They minimize us, you know. Because Pentecostal folk, you know, act like we act. The sanctified folk, and especially them apostolic folk, they think, you know, they just cut up and carry on. And Holly, I was listening to that beautiful uh, praise team. They excited me upstairs in the office because they wasn't down here playing. They was, they was, they was uh, serving God. The singer, the lead singer, she hollered every now and then. And I felt that holler. I, I vibrate. Amen. You, you, you ain't praising God if you can't wake somebody up. What kind of praise? What kind of praise is that? You don't go to church to get fan to sleep. Can I enter his gates with what? Come into his courts how? With praise. That's how we're supposed to show up. And I, I heard the, the, the psalmist, and I'm going to move on real quick, but a psalm just, just dropped in my mind, and, and the psalmist when he was in dire times, I think it was Psalms 55 or Psalms 57, excuse me, I, I sometimes get intertwined betwixt the two, but he was talking about worship and he was talking about praising God. And, and there's some words, uh, these scholars can get me later, but I'm gonna use it right now. He said, I will await the dawn. He said, he said, I will await the dawn. I don't know what other scholars got out of that, but. But the Lord spoke to me and he said, you can take your praise and make darkness turn to light. You can take your praise. Can I get a witness in here? Never let anybody minimize your praise. Never let anybody minimize your hallelujah and your thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because he requires hallelujah. He requires thank you, Jesus. And he requires it at a certain volume, a certain decibel. Can I get a witness? Sometimes it's loud, but there's still a decibel, even if it isn't loud. Amen. There's a decibel of the spirit because they that worship God. Isn't that what he told the woman? He said, you got to worship me in the spirit and in truth. Somebody need to tell somebody, your worship got to be for real. It's, it, can't be, it can't be pretentious. There's, there's a decibel that that heaven is listening to, a frequency. 
praise God, that the Holy Ghost is focused on and and, 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 and you got to learn how to operate in that realm. And, 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 and you remember Jesus' disciples. I got to get to this. Jesus' disciples, when, when he was making his entrance into Jerusalem, his triumphant entry into the holy city. And you remember all the folk that were throwing palms in his pathway. And they wasn't playing. They were crying out. They said, Hosanna! Hosanna! Amen. Hosanna means save now. Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. His disciples who got a little uppity because they were running in his circle say they need to be quiet. But Jesus said, if these won't praise me, I'll wake a rock up. And the rock a crowd and, and give me glory. You, you got to open your mouth to get something from God. You got to, isn't that what blind Bartimaeus did? Yeah. Sitting by the wayside, those uppity disciples again, those cranky church folk that have been in church so long until they've reached a place of sophistication. Yeah. Amen. And they, then Bartimaeus was trying to get his blessing, see? And they told him, hush! But the more they told him to hush, the louder he got. Yeah. Do you not know when you praise him, you're telling God, have mercy on me? Do you not know when you praise God, amen, that you're telling God, here I am? Do you not know your praise separates you from the crowd? Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish I had a praying church. I need somebody to tell another neighbor, second time you bothered your neighbor, tell him if you praise him, your blessings will find you. If you praise him, your blessings will overtake you. If you praise him, you won't leave you desolate. You won't leave you desolate, dry, and dormant. He'll, he'll find you. He'll find you. And so uh, that's why I act the way I act. And, and that's why I, I wanted to bring you back to this text. I wanted to just highlight to you. Can I have about seven minutes? I wanted to highlight to you the importance of memory, the importance of recall, the importance of exercising your memory exercising your recall there there's something special about it and i hope faith bible tabernacle if you don't hear anything else i'm saying suffering and bishop fair i hope you will always insist upon amen an atmosphere of praise in this church amen an atmosphere of adoration an atmosphere of celebration can i get a witness that has to that must be the order of this house that must be the permeating ethic that pervades this house. It is a house of worship, house of glorification. It's a house where people come and, and have an encounter with God. It's a place, amen, where everybody that leaves this place should have a, have a Jacob moment. Y'all remember that? Amen. When he named that place Bethel, woke up the next morning, and had a visitation from God and said, surely the Lord was in this place. I knew it not. You, he should, he's in this place. He's in this house. And this scripture, uh, to me, amen, engulfs all those things. I, I don't have time to tell you, amen, about the, the Hebrew writer and every uh, element of the capacity under which he wrote. I, I just remind you that when he wrote this book, he was writing, praise God, to a church that, that was under duress, a church that was under strain, they were stressed, they were bugged out, they, uh, they my, my God, the, the Hebrew church, they, uh, they, they, it was horrific what they went through. It was written uh, in a nightmare season. I tried to explain that this morning, this book, you gotta get it all in proportion and, and understand what the foundation and backdrop is. I know we use uh, uh, Hebrews and we tend to try to minister from it with an, an element of sophistication, and I, I understand that. There, there's certain things in here we, we get glued to. I know uh, the book of Hebrews is sort of a, a, a New Testament answer to the book of Leviticus in, in the Old Testament. There's a parallelism that's going on. I got all of that. I know uh, we like to talk about that. We like to talk, praise God, about, you know, the comparison of old with new, and that's what he labors with the first several chapters of this book, labors with uh, what went on in the Old Testament and, and the old economy. He labors with uh, 
you know, all of those uh, ritualistic things that are recorded there in the book of Leviticus. And of course, uh, by the time we arrive as New Testament saints, we understand that what was there in the Old Testament, it was just types and shadows of what, what was yet to come. You know, I, I don't know about y'all, I'm glad I'm on the fulfillment side. I'm glad. Somebody catch that later. Somebody catch that later. I was trying to drop a word in somebody's life. I was trying to tell somebody, you're on the fulfillment side. Wherever you've been, wherever you've been. I'm speaking over somebody's 2023. Amen. You're on, everybody tell somebody third time, you're on the fulfillment side. Amen. Amen. God is, a, is about to give essence to the shadow. He's about to bring fulfillment to the type. And, and Hebrews is a book that runs that parallelism. I don't have to, you know, run through all of it. I don't have time to run through all of it. And, and those first several chapters are telling you that everything is better. Everything is better. Everything is better. Everything is better. What, what do you mean better? Everything is better. Whatever was in the old is better in the new. Whatever was better yesterday, it was good yesterday, but it's better today. Amen. Or oh, what was better? Better sacrifice. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Back then, they sacrificed turtle doves and, 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 and heifers and, and sheep. Y'all remember that? All that stuff they threw up on the altar and, and sacrificed that. But the Hebrew writer said all of that was good, but Jesus was a better sacrifice. He died that we might live. Said, I am come that you might have life. And, and I, I ain't just giving you life that more abundantly. Amen. His blood was better blood. Can I get a witness? Blood that was sacrificed yesteryear. They had to keep on bringing it back. Every festival, they had to bring a sacrifice. Sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice and that blood was offered up and it, it washed away whatever was there at the time they offered it. Then they messed up again, had to bring some more blood. But when Jesus hung on Calvary, when Jesus, Jesus hung, when he hung, when he hung on Calvary, amen, when he shed his blood, it only had to be shed one time. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, it'll never lose its power. Reaches to the highest mountain. Your neighbor don't understand that. Look at your neighbor and point up yonder and say, it reaches to the highest mountain. And then tell him, let me tell you, it, it came where I was because it flowed to the lowest valley. The blood that Jesus said for me it shall never lose its power you can be seated I don't want to go too fast you may be seated that, that blood it, it, that blood that, it, it was so much better you know they drained that heifer they, they drained that turtle dove they drained they drained that sheep didn't they amen but Jesus' blood is, is so powerful and, 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 and implicit in it is such cleansing power Tell a songwriter wrote a song and said one drop of blood bought me a million years that's an old song a soul was born each time he shed a tear he loosed the chain that fettered you and me he bought my soul through death on Calvary Jesus paid it all all to him. Wish I was in the right church. Your, your neighbor, your neighbor, don't understand it. Can I bother your neighbor for the fourth and a half time and 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 tell your neighbor? I don't know about you, but, but I was in debt. I was in debt. The songwriter said he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. But now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt I could not pay. Everything, everything was better. He was a better priest. Y'all can be seated. He was a better priest. He was a better priest. We, he was a better priest. Better than the Aaronic order. Better, 
better. You know, Aaron, amen, uh, was called to the, to the office of the priesthood, and he ran up in the holies of holies. He was better than Aaron. They had to tie a rope around Aaron and tie a rope around everybody after Aaron. Amen. Just in case when they went in the holies of holies, amen, they had a little smudge on them and God slew them. Nobody could go up in after them. Had to pull them out with a rope. Amen. But Jesus was so holy. Till the veil in the temple was rent in twain. Can I get a witness in here? He don't minister in the temple on the earth. Amen. He ministers on high. And he stands up there whenever the accuser comes against you and I. Because the devil is an accuser of the brethren. Jesus stands up there as the great high priest and holds himself out as the supreme sacrifice to God. Every time Satan indicts you, Jesus said, I shed my blood. Oh, I wish I was in the right church. Somebody, somebody look at your neighbor and say, that's why he said, when I see the blood, I'll, pa I'll pass over you. Who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? I wish I had somebody. Somebody help me celebrate the Lord right now. I, I, take your seat for just a moment. Take your seat. Take your seat for just a second. But as you sit down, as you sit down, tell your neighbor, Jesus set me free. He who the Son hath made free. Free indeed. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. I'm free. You free. You ought to wave your hand and say, I'm free. If you're free while you're sitting in your seat, you ought to move your feet around and say, I'm free. If you're free, you ought to shake your finger in the devil's face and say, God saved me. Why should I be bound? I, I refuse to be bound. I refuse to be in bondage. I refuse to be held back. He come on you. Got to move on. I got to move on. All of that is back behind this book of, of Hebrews. All of that is, is written. You may be seated. Written, written in, in Hebrews. Uh, we don't have time to talk about everything. You know we love the hall of faith. I'm not going to talk about the hall of faith. The hall of faith is we use it metaphorically, you know, and reference it to the hall of fame, the hall of faith. And we don't have time to talk about all those men and women in the hall of faith, people like Ruth and Deborah, and, and uh, we can't talk about Jephthah. We don't have time to talk about Abraham and Sarah. So y'all, <laughs> hallelujah, we don't have time. We don't have time. These all died in the faith. Died, died. You ought to tell your neighbor, if I die, I'm gonna die in the faith. Though he slay me, Though he slay me, yet, yet will I trust him. Nothing's going to change my mind about God. Nothing's going to change my perspective on God. I don't care what I'm in, he's still a good God. I don't care what I got to go through, he's still a good God. I've been in hell and high water, but he's still a good God. That, that was the backdrop. I need about three and a half more minutes. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, three and a half minutes, three three and a half minutes pray pray just for three and a half minutes this the, the, the backdrop of this book the back the backdrop of this book it really is persecution though no, all that stuff we talked about that's the tapestry and that's the stuff the deep preachers get out of it but i'm not a deep preacher i, I I'm, I'm just somebody trying to hold on i'm just i'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody I, I i didn't come to be deep tonight I, I come to tell you amen what this god is able to do this book really the purpose of the book was to encourage people who had been persecuted people who had been in a place of desperation deprivation uh, I, oh i wish we had time to talk about the times but we don't have time to talk about the times this book was written 
to people who lived in a hostile environment. Amen. It wasn't written to Namby Pamby Saints. It wasn't written, amen, you know, uh, uh, to those easy uh, slithering saints of today. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about them, amen, that, that look to slide through here on a flowery bed of ease. This wasn't written to the hyperfaith saint, amen, that pretends that every day is rosy and every day is all right. Now, I know about confession. Confession is good, but, but because you confess don't mean you got to be crazy. Amen, amen. amen. I can claim my healing and still be sick. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And when I'm sick, I know that I'm sick. You got a headache? You got a headache. You got a toothache? You got a toothache. You ain't got no money in the bank? You ain't got no money in the bank. You can confess all you want to, and you should confess. And after a while, there will be a manifestation. But before the manifestation, you got to deal with the emptiness. Oh, I, I, wish, I wish I could preach. I, I need somebody to ask your neighbor, six time, ask your neighbor, how do you deal with the emptiness? How, how do you deal with the emptiness? You rest in the fact that God is in the empty spaces. <laughs> See, we miss that, and we misteach people, amen, because we have them so focused on manifestation, amen, that they miss the presence of God. It doesn't take manifestation for God to be present. He sometimes, you can't see him, but he's there, somebody said, in a strange and mysterious way. I, I don't know how he's there, but, but we, don't you sing the song, he never left me alone? That means when I can't see him, he's still by my side. When I can't feel him, he's still by my side. When I can't speak in tongues, with there's no hook of a shine, shine of a shoe coming in a, a, in a Honda. Guess what? God is there even when I don't speak in tongues. I got Bible for it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And darkness was where? Upon the face of the deep. But while darkness was laying on the deep, the Spirit of God moved on the face of the water. I need somebody to tell the neighbor, I'm in a bad place. But don't mistake me for not having God moving in my life. He's working right now. He's working in the darkness. He's working in the emptiness. He's working in my brokenness. He's working in my hurt. He's working in my pain. I need somebody to say, God is with me right now. Tell three people in rapid succession and raise your voice and buck your eyes and tell them he's with me right now. He's with me. With, with me. Ikaba. Ikaba ya with me right now. I'm raggedy, but he's with me. I may look broke as Job's turkey, but he's with me. Oh, my hair may be nappy, but he's with me. My breath might stink, but he's with me. God is on. Oh, I wish I was in the right church. Didn't he tell you, lo, I am with you. Always. Even to the end of the world. This book, you, you can be seated. I really got to close. You, take your seat for a moment. <clears throat> really got to close right now. I just came to encourage somebody tonight. Came to, to, to bring a word, I pray, to somebody tonight. I, 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 again, I didn't come to be deep. I just came to encourage you. This book was written to encourage people, amen, that were going through. Uh, if I had time, I'd talk about Nero. I'd talk about persecution. I would talk about the Roman cult, if I had time. Talk about Rome and how they deified their, their emperors, their Caesars, how, how, how they were gods to the people. I'd tell you about the coinage and the image of the emperor that was on the coin, if I had time. I'd tell you. Amen. They were so caught up in their own godship that they staunched out all other gods. And they ignored Christians for as long as they could. They ignored them when they were young. They ignored them when they were small. They ignored them when they were just a little sect that, that hung out in, in a room at the temple. Because when they first started Christianity, they worshipped in the temple. That, that's where Peter and John went. You remember when they were headed up to the, the prayer meeting and the lame man was sitting there at the gate of the temple called Beautiful. That's because they worship 
in the temple. But but once this thing caught hold, the church got persecuted. Oh, yeah, it was smooth sailing from about Acts 1 to around Acts 4. But then, but then they began to persecute the church. Right. And Peter, you remember Peter and John got whooped, got put in jail, persecuted the church. They put him in jail another time, and an angel went down and, and unlocked the jail, took off his stocks and bonds, and the church was in prayer. I ain't got time to tell that story. They were praying for him because he was bound up in prison by persecution. And, and while they were praying, Peter came knocking on the door. I, I don't know where that came from, but the Lord told me to tell somebody, your prayers have already been answered. Your prayer. I don't, I don't know who that was for. Ask somebody, was that your word or was that my word? Your, your prayer has already been answered. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor, expect your doorbell to ring tomorrow. Expect, expect, expect. Expect the alarm to go off this week. I'm trying to help somebody. Get ready for a blessing. Get ready for a miracle. Oh, I, I need somebody to help me. Tell another neighbor, it's about your time, about your time. Matter of fact, tell him, go back at him and say, the preacher told me. Tell him, I ain't playing with you. The preacher told me to tell you that you are next in line for a miracle. I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to your address. I'm going to stop by your job. I'm going to bind every demon and devil. I wish somebody would catch that with a praise right now. Help. Help. Help is on the way. You believe it, wave your hand and say, God, I thank you for my help. Thank you for my deliverance. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for opening the door. I come to tell somebody that church was persecuted. I don't have time. You can be seated just another moment. I don't have time to talk to you, praise God, about Paul and about Stephen. Stephen got stoned, didn't he? Perch under persecution, church being terrorized. Matter of fact, Paul was the chief terrorist there in the church. You can read about it, can't you? Paul, Paul persecuted the church. Matter of fact, matter of fact, he never got over it. He said, I'm the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church. I held the cloaks of those that, that stoned Stephen to death. I'm the one. He said, I held the cloak got the cloak and hid out in the crowd and, and I stood there and watched him. I watched him when he muttered. I watched him. I watched him. I watched him when he muttered. Thank God there in the crowd. I was standing there and I tried to read his lips because I thought he was looking at me but, but I realized he wasn't looking at me. He saw something beyond me. If you're going to make it, you got to see beyond the test. You got to see beyond the trial. You got to see, he said, I see Jesus uh, standing on the right hand of God. You ain't going to make it if you don't see Jesus working for you. I wish somebody would tell a neighbor, the Lord said, I'm working it out for you right now. Y'all remember that song? He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out for you. God is. Uh, I'm in the wrong church. Uh, I need somebody that believes it to wave your hand and shout glory. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, hallelujah. He's working it out for me. I'm still stuck in the ditch. I still feel the pelting of the stones on my brow. I feel the contusion. I feel my blood dripping. But I see Jesus. He's standing up for me. And he told me to hold on a little while longer because help is on the way. Hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, Stephen. And then and, and Paul didn't understand it. And then Paul said, uh, and not only did I see that, he said, I got persecuted myself. Uh, after I signed up with Jesus, he said, I went through persecution. And he said, I have my own testimony. I'm talking to you weak saints. I'm talking to you who are struggling. I'm talking to you that feel like you can't make it. Paul, listen to what Paul said. He said, I'm still holding on. He said, I'm still holding on. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. He said, a night and a day I spent in the deep holding on to fragments when the boat broke apart and I reached out. I feel like preaching tonight. 
So I reached out and I grabbed, amen, a hold of the piece of the boat. And I told everybody on the ship with me, hold to the fragments. Uh, I told come to tell somebody in Buffalo tonight, when your life is falling to pieces, hold on to a fragment. Uh, oh, I wish I could preach. Look at, look at your neighbor and tell him, the Lord told me to tell you, you're not going to die in this situation. This is not your end. You will not drown. You may be in the water, but he said, I'm going to hold your head up. I'm going to hold it up above the water. Yet shall I praise him. Yet, yet shall I live. He said, in journeys, often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils, thank God, by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, who shall separate me from the love of God? which is in Christ Jesus, shall famine, shall nakedness, shall peril, shall sword. I wish I was in the right church tonight. Would you look at your neighbor and say, nay? I want you to holler like that praise leader hollered a few moments ago. Look back at him and say, nay! In all these things, in all these things, I'm trying to close tonight, but I need somebody to help me close this message. Need you to open up your mouth. Need you to get a little twang in your voice box. Need you to lean over in your neighbor's direction and just shout it out one more time and say, nay, and all these things are more than a conqueror. Through him that loved me. I got to close tonight. My time is just about gone. But I just came, thank God, to tell somebody that God has given you the stuff. Thank God to make it. He's given you the stuff to be a victor, to be a winner. Oh, would you help me preach and say, wait a minute, neighbor. Say, ah. I forgot to tell you, if God be for us, who can be against us? If the Lord is on your side, I got the clothes. I caught a plane this afternoon. Thank somebody shout glory. I rushed to the airport because I had to make it to Buffalo to tell somebody at the 16th anniversary celebration I had to make it to this service tonight not to give you a mystery not to tell you something strange I just stopped by to tell you that God is still able he specializes God don't want to help a brother preach when you help me preach tonight when you scream out in the sanctuary, uh, lay your hand on your chest uh, and say, my God, uh, he specializes uh, in things that seem uh, impossible. Uh, he'll do for you uh, but no other power uh, but the Holy Ghost uh, power can do. Uh, I came to tell somebody uh, he's still a healer. Uh, I came to tell somebody He's still a way maker. I came to tell somebody tonight there's nothing too hard for God. I wish I had me a praying church. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, the Lord told me to tell you if you hold on, I still got a blessing. It's your name on it. I still, I wish I was in the right church. I still, I still got a blessing. I still got a way out for you. And 
So I came tonight as I get ready to go to my seat. I came tonight to let the devil know that I got a memory of what God did for me. I came tonight to tell the devil you shouldn't have messed with me and let me make this anniversary service because my memory has been stirred up. Can I get a witness in here? Look at your name and say, name of There's victory when you remember. There's strength when you remember. There's power when you remember. I heard a writer say, Lord, I need somebody to help me moan tonight. Lord, don't let me fail. I want to be your bride. When my way gets dark, keep me by my side. When my faith grows weak, always let me see something in my life that God has done for me. I need everybody that got a memory. Look at your name and point behind you. Say, look where he brought me from. Y'all didn't say it like you had a memory. Look at somebody else. Say it like you got a memory. And say, look where he brought me from. Ask them. Ask them. How far did he bring Ask them. How far did he bring Tell them. He brought me from a night and all way. He brought me out of the mighty place. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul. A song of his praise. Hallelujah. I got the clothes. Will you help me close? If you're a brother, put your hand behind your back. If you're a sister, put your hand on your hip and say, hey, neighbor, we got to close this message. Say, when you see the devil, tell him for me, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I don't know what your name is, but I'm a winner for Jesus. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. Somebody let out a winner's praise. 